Welcome to Palma, Mallorca, where behind me here is a boat I've been looking forward to catching up with for some time. This is the San Lorenzo SX-76. Now the SX range are a kind of semi-explorer style, so it's a lot about outside deck space, enjoying the Mediterranean weather close to the water. So you can see that this aft deck, it's like a beach club area. We've got a really big, low platform here. Let me just step on, I'll show you around. So you can see there's a really big space here that is used both for entertaining and of course for stowing the tender. Now again, because of the length of that, you can get a really good sized tender. I think it's about a 4.2 meter Williams tender on here. That sits in the central part. And then over here, there is also space for a jet ski. Now you think, how are you gonna launch those? It's not a hydraulic platform. And very cleverly, there is a concealed crane in this side unit. So you can see here, that hinges around there, that swings around, that comes right around here drops down, you can lift up your tender, lift up your jet ski, swing it round and launch it. All the controls are here. We've also got an electronic gangway here, so you can see those are the switches for that. That will come out the end here. And rather than just being a simple gangway, it's actually a set of steps. You might be able to see a similar one a couple of boats across, but it creates a step so it can rise and lower to meet the key itself. Now we've also got some storage either side here. You see that is the control for the central platform. So this area here is in fact a central platform and that lowers way down to create another kind of beach under the water if you like. So again there are steps down to that and then you can create your own almost like a sort of enclosed swimming area because the only bit that isn't actually closed off from the sea is there. You could put up a net if you had in a, an area with jellyfish or something, you could effectively create a little seaside swimming pool down there. And there are poles that slot in either side so that you can't fall in from this side. So we've also got a bit of extra stowage space behind here. Just see if I can give you a peek behind there. So here are some of the poles that you can see, they all have their own separate stowage space. There's also room for cleaning gear, etc. You could probably get paddle boards or something in there if you wanted to. And over on this side, we've got a deck shower. If you want to wash the deck down or indeed the salt off yourself if you had a nice swim in the sea. We've got really heavy duty deck gear here. And look at this, I love the way they do this. There's actually a kind of stainless steel tray all around here, so if you have got wet lines or whatever, that can keep it all together and it will drain out the corner there. We've got the shore power here. Again, you've got two different sizes of shore power depending on what level of electricity charge you can get in the marina. Nice to see we've also got a couple of cleats down here if you want to put these ball fenders and protect the corners. Now the price for this yacht, while we're at it, is around about 5.6 million euros ex-tax. That's for a fully spec kitted out boat. And San Lorenzo really do give you an enormous range of options. It's pretty much a custom built interior. You can choose more or less exactly the finishes, the furniture, etc., that you want. Steps up either side, really nice. It helps create a good connection with the lower level. And so this is kind of the upper level of the beach club area. And because we've only got these sort of stainless steel rails and freestanding furniture, this can all be rearranged so it's facing aft. It all then becomes like a sort of bi-level beach club area. So really nice to have that flexibility to arrange the furniture how you want. And of course, you can choose exactly the furniture you want too. So lovely long flybridge overhang that provides plenty of shade. We've also got some storage in these sort of flying buttress areas. You can see lots of good storage here. And this is something I rather like. There's actually a second helm station stored in here. 
which if you lift up, if I can do it one-handed, swings round, you can have it in that position, or indeed come all the way round. So the captain can stand here when you're coming in stern two to a Mediterranean marina such as this one. He can control it all from here with the joystick control and the bow thruster whilst looking over the stern, see exactly how close you are to the key and indeed along the side deck to see how close you are to the boat. Very neat solution. So it is an IPS drive boat, so you've got those steerable pods. We'll have a look at the engine room later, but all you need is just that joystick. There's no need for any throttles. You can control it all using that single joystick and the bow thruster. So just swing that back in there. Keep it nice and out of the way. <clears throat> And then over on this side is access to the crew cabin. We'll have a look at that later. But what we will do is just do a quick tour of the decks once we're here. You can see we've got access out through a side gate there if you come alongside. And that's nice too, to see that just the size of these mouldings, really chunky mouldings, just feels a very substantial solid boat. And then these lovely walk around decks, again with the cutaway bulwark, so you've got a really nice view through there from the saloon. We'll enjoy that in a minute. Look at that, I love these leather covers for the fenders. So you hang the fenders off them. You've got cleats on them so you can adjust the height very easily. And that nice leather protector pad, just make sure you don't scratch the GRP itself. Got pop-up cleats here too. Really chunky bits of kit. Lovely wide side decks. You can see my feet down there. There's plenty of space. There's no carefully balancing along here. Dedicated stowage for a boat hook. And then this fabulous foredeck area. Now check this out. Now very distinctive styling on these SX yachts. You can see the forward sloped windscreens on both levels, it gives it that sort of semi-explorer look. And again, a really big foredeck space. So two teak tables, relatively small. It's more kind of coffee table size. Look at the sturdiness of those pillars. They are fixed supports, but absolutely massive. And it just all adds to this impression of a really solid boat. Very laid back backrests. These aren't actually adjustable, but it does mean you can use them all as a kind of chaise long style lounger if you want to, or sit around the table and have a nice cocktail in the evening. Lovely big sunbathing space here. There's a few interesting things going on here that I might just point out too. I think if we lift up one of these cushions, just temporarily put that to one side. You can see we've got a big storage locker down here, and this is where you put the fenders and lines. You can see we've got a, a little rail for hanging the lines from, and big deep locker you can pop all the big fenders into. We've got the covers down there at the moment. Just pop that back. Over on this side, there is a similar space, but this is used for something a little different, which I thought might be interesting to show you. Because down here, you've actually got the water tank and indeed a water maker. So you can see there is the water maker. So interesting idea to have that well away from all the other technical space in its own area. Got all the filtering systems, lots of space, and again, more room to put fenders and so on if you want to. And then under this central one, slightly different again. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. I'll probably only lift up one panel temporarily, but you can see there is all the anchor gear. So really nice, it's sort of concealed out of the way when you don't need to use it. When you do need to use it, very easy to get to. Just lift up a cushion, lift up a panel, and there is a second cushion and panel here that lifts up too, so that you can get easy access, not just to the anchor winch and everything there, also get right up to those mooring lines. So really good access. You just need to remove the cushions and the panel. Right, let's carry on round the side deck. You can see it is a full walk around design. Got those life rings in there, nice and accessible. Another boat hook. And then a door out from the sort of saloon bridge area. We'll see that from inside in a minute. We'll just carry on outside for the moment. And another gate in the side, side moulding there. And then these glass doors that will slide all the way across. So you can see that is a four-part door. 
and it will go all the way across if you want to leave a completely open flow between the inside saloon and the outside cockpit area. So here we are in the saloon, relatively small. It's, you know, the idea is that there's as much outside space as there is inside space. We've got totally free choice of furniture in here. Again, it's totally up to the owner to spec this how they want. So it's sort of freestanding sofas. They can be rearranged how you want to. Obviously, in terms of the style, the cushions, and so on. Oh, here we go. It's very kindly slid the door all the way across, so I can see exactly. Sorry. That's fine. That's all good. Thank you. You carry on. But look, you can see just how open that is to that whole aft deck area. So it all becomes one big kind of day entertaining space, inside, outside, however you want to use it. There's a few nice features in here. We've got a lovely wine fridge in here, perfectly positioned. Help yourself for a quick cheeky drink. Got more storage under there. Plenty more storage over here. And there's a reason that that's relatively shallow, and I'll show you why that is in a minute, because I think if I can find the controls, here we go. You can see here there's a control unit, and that controls a very discreet television that unusually slides out sideways from behind that panel. And it actually goes a long way. It goes right the way into that outside space so that you get a good size widescreen TV. And you do have to keep your finger on the button because a one touch could be a little hazardous if there was someone sitting there. But I think that's a really discreet way of stowing that television. Is of course exactly opposite the seating, just where you need it. But very nice not to have it blocking the view when it's not needed. So now you can enjoy those full height, full length windows, really spectacular sized piece of glass that running all the way up that side, very nearly as long there. And this is where you can really appreciate those cutaway boardwalks. So you get the view, obviously you can't really see it when we're in a marina like this, but you can see you do get a terrific view out through those boardwalks. There's nothing to block them. There's just that top gel coat, uh, top GRP rail, and then the stainless steel underneath right down to almost foot level. So really lovely views out. Uh, we'll just pause briefly before we move forward, but you can see this is the access down to the lower deck. In fact, why don't we quickly pop down there? Well, there's nobody down there. You can see lovely oak flooring leading down here, smoke glass mirrors. And then we're down on the lower deck. So you can see there is a corridor leading forward to the bow and then a door on our port side here. And this goes into the owner's cabin, which is really rather wonderful. So full beam, a midship's cabin. And because of those IPS drives, this goes a long way back. They don't require nearly as much space as traditional shaft drives. So you get a really good sized cabin here. Two huge opening ports. Again, sort of the, 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 the trend at the moment is to have fixed glass here, but I like the fact that you've got these really two large opening ports, so, something sort of slightly more traditional about them, but you still get a really big piece of glass, great views, lots of light. There's a television behind this mirror here, uh, so literally it's invisible during the daytime, but as soon as you light it up, there's a big TV behind there. Nice little bench here, lots of storage, obviously, behind all these panels. Very neat little dinky reading lights that come on when you pull them out. Good sized bed, quite low level, it's just below sort of knee height. A lovely bed area, and then open to the bathroom. And again, I think that works really well on a yacht of this size. You know, if you try and have a separate bathroom, then all the spaces feel a little bit cramped. But by having it open to the cabin, you get the feeling of space, but you've also got the privacy because the actual individual elements like the toilet, B day are behind a separate screen here, and equally a lovely shower on this side. And of course, the choice of marble and finish is entirely up to you. You can choose exactly what you want. I think this is very classy, actually. It's a slightly sort of tan colored veined marble, beautifully done, lots of storage either side of the sink. And then this mirror here also slides back and forth. So you can have it over to one side and open that port too if you want to. And you can lock it in whatever position you want to. 
really, I think that works fantastically well. You can have a, lots of natural light and air coming in. You can get the extra floor space of that bathroom, but the privacy when you need it. And then here, there's a nice little desk or vanity unit. See again, there's a mirror that lights up when it's all the way up. And behind the door here, another big storage area. Well, proper hanging wardrobe in there. And the other thing I wanted to point out is just the size and solidity of all the fixtures and fittings here. Look at that door. Look how wide that is. And that's because it's a proper dense sandwich construction and it has sound deadening material in between the two layers of that. So when you close it, it really does shut out the sound. And then moving forward from here, we've got storage either side. Again, you can't have too much storage, all the kind of sheets and bedding and so on. Then on the left-hand side, the port side, I should say, we've got a twin cabin over here. Actually, pretty good size. We've got plenty of headroom. It's got to be six, six and a half feet, I would say, here. Two twin beds, nice thick mattresses, lots of storage underneath. They don't slide together like, like they sometimes do, but I think that's because you've got all this access to storage under the beds. Big hanging locker there. Air conditioning for each of the cabins overhead, a bit more storage. It's also got a huge sound system in this boat. I might show you a little bit of that in a minute, but again, opening portholes. And then an ensuite bathroom, which also doubles as the day head because there is separate access to that here. So that is effectively the day head for all the, the, your day guests too, but same high quality marble, proper separate shower, loo, and then over on this side, another twin cabin. I'm sure you could spec this as a double if you wanted, but you can see similar layout, two good sized single beds, lots of storage space. And this one has its own private ensuite bathroom. Very similar. So it's only that one that operates as the day head. This is a private ensuite bathroom. Again, shower, loo, sink. And uh, actually, there's a little sort of wash style B day, but. Most of the bathrooms have their own bidets, but again, opening porthole here, very nicely done. And a beautiful sort of light oak finish and very nice artificial lighting too. So as well as any natural lighting, it's very well lit artificially. And then the forward VIP up in the bow. And unusually this faces across the beam of the boat, which is quite, quite an unusual idea, but actually works very well. You've got plenty of space all around the bed. You can walk around both sides of it. Again, you've got these opening port style windows on either side. Lots of storage. Uh, oh no, no, I don't think that is. We've got a television that pops up from there. We've got storage under the sofa and yet more of that sound gear. It's Denon sound gear everywhere. Really high quality. Hanging locker there storage behind side both of the beds and then ensuite bathroom right forward in the traditional heads position location nice sink again one of those sliding mirrors with a port behind it toilet and bidet and then shower even further forward behind there all in that same lovely slightly almost light coffee colored marble right let's move back out that is the lower deck accommodation area let's make our way back up see if we can have a look further forward so here we are back in the saloon it's emptied out forward so we can go through there now lovely kind of floating staircase that leads up to the flybridge but you can see there is space between all those steps so it just lets again the sort of flow of air and feeling of space and light and glass uh, bulkheads either side again just to let the light in as much as possible and then forward to the dining area so this is on the main deck level with that forward sloping window really lovely so not quite square shaped but nice rounded edges every, everywhere but really lovely formal dining area here Storage all around it, fantastic views out 
through these windows, kind of 270 degree views all around. Got a, yes, another fridge in there. Got an, it's an ice, maker, ice maker in there. And then lots more storage. This is for all the kind of cutlery and so on. All kitted out. I won't show you them all, but that's part of this massive sound system. A huge capacity. I mean, you're going to know about it when this boat pulls into a bay and <laughs> starts cranking up the music. But you can see here, for example, perfect storage for all your soup bowls and cups and saucers, all beautifully done. And then this is right next to the galley, and this is rather cleverly done too. It's the size of boat that most of you, it's mostly going to be an, an owner captain, an owner driver, they will helm their own boat, but they will probably have crew perhaps to help with the catering and the cleaning and so on. So it can be left completely open if you're using it just as a family boat. If you want a bit more privacy or the chef is preparing dinner, that can slide across and keep that completely separate if you want it to. Very nice way of doing it. Have the option of both. And then if we come through to galley from this area, again, there's a sliding pocket door in there. I'm not sure if I can, I think that's the lock. I can't quite work out if that's, oh no, it does slide across. So there you go, you can see that slides across. Again, if you want to keep it separate or left totally open. A really good light cabin, uh, galley, got lots of workspace area here, good size sink, storage overhead and a big opening window. Again, I think that's a really nice touch to be able to open that up, get a flow of fresh air in here. Very nicely done. Induction hob, extractor fan, oven, and a good size American style double fridge. Lots of neat features. We've got sort of pull out drawers for spices and I won't go through it all, but you get the idea. We've got a dishwasher in there, full-size dishwasher, I might add. None of your little half-size narrow ones in here. Lots of storage space there. Love that solution. I think that's really clever. You can have it separate, open, and again, the more open you have it, the more you sort of enjoy that feeling of fresh air and outside becoming part of the inside. And then steps up to the flybridge. These are the only steps. There's no external staircase, but this takes you up to the flybridge area. And again, this is not another one of those sort of areas that slightly blends the inside outside feeling. So you can see there is uh, a forward facing windscreen around here that is all fixed. And even though that's curved, that is absolutely clear. There's no distortion at all, which is a hard thing to do on a piece of glass that size. But it does mean you've got no mullions in the way, you've got a perfect view out all the way around. And when I said about inside outside, so it obviously feels quite well protected. We've got the full hard top overhead. But if you notice here, we've got some buttons and these are for the electric windows. So either side of the helm, you can see you've got electric windows that will go up or down at the touch of a button. And that's exactly the same over on that side. You can see it wearing slowly up. I won't go all the way, but you can leave them exactly how you want. So you can have it halfway up or all the way down or completely enclosed. And again, similar thing overhead. We've got this kind of louvered roof here, which all tilt. I can probably demonstrate that too. So if I press the open button, you can see that they go into the vertical position, let in as much light and air as you want. Equally, press the close button, and they will wear back down into place. I might just go all the way here just to show you how effective that is. So you've now got a completely weatherproof seal. So no rain, no wind, is anything is going to get through there. And then this lovely seating area here, and we've still got the covers on at the moment, but you can see that those will all open up. We'll take a look at that in a minute, but the reason for that is this whole area can be air conditioned. So if it is a particularly hot country or particularly cold, you can heat it up or cool it down exactly as you wish. So again, it's a kind of inside-outside space. You can have it set up exactly how you want. 
big helm bench there. This is the only helm, there's no lower helm, but because of that flexibility, there's no need for a second one. Lovely big traditional wooden San Lorenzo wheel, proper ship's wheel. And here are the controls. So like that aft helm station I showed you, you've got the joystick for the twin IPS drives. You have got the, st the standard throttles here too. We've got access to all the ship systems here. You can see we've got this on a camera set up at the moment. But again, San Lorenzo's bespoke access. We've got the automatic bilge pumps, the alarms, the lights, the windlass, all specifically designed for this boat. And again, you've got access to the windlass here. You've got a bow thruster too if you want to just control the bow itself. And then the engine panel showing you how the engines are running. Now a bit of storage behind here. Now this seating area here, again, very flexible. At the moment we've got it in the sort of smaller of the two settings, but you can see that that table folds over and then slides across so that that perfectly matches the curve of the seating here. And you've got extra freestanding chairs, so effectively it comes out to about here once it's in fully expanded mode. And then you've got comfortable seating again for 10 around this table. Over on this side, a lovely wet bar, all done in, in this teak finish. Look at that. It's like a proper chef station. It's all stainless steel. You can, of course, have a grill in there if you want to. You've got the sink, but you've got that lovely stainless steel splashback and preparation area. We've got fridge under there. Lots of storage. You get the idea. But really stylish when it's open or closed, in fact, but particularly like having that teak finish on the top there. And then if we just slip outside here, you can see this is the kind of raised aft deck area above the cockpit down below. Lovely uh, sort of bimini style shade up here if you want to. That obviously can be uh, deconstructed too and taken down if you want to leave it, if you want to enjoy the sun. You can absolutely do that. Again, freestanding furniture, so you can arrange it more or less how you want to. So this is access down to the crew area and the engines. You can see we've got more of those stanchions for protecting that aft deck area. If you want to got kids on board, keep it nicely roped off. And then you drop down these teak steps into the crew area. And you can see that we've got a bathroom area here, relatively small. It's a wet room. You can see there's a curtain that pulls out, but very nice to have their own separate bathroom, particularly on a boat like this, which is really designed to be right on the cusp between an owner-operator boat and a crewed boat. I'm just going to flip this shut just to keep it a bit quieter. You see there is a full waterproof, soundproof door into the engine room. And then a sleeping area here, pocket door in there that slides across so you can keep that nice and separate and private and quiet and washer dryers behind it. But yeah, you can absolutely have this purely as a owner operated boat, but you're probably gonna want a deck hand or maybe a chef or something to help with the cleaning and catering. And then access through to the engine room. Full waterproof door. And here we are with the twin IPS 1200 engines. So you can see we've got the engines in front, the pods behind. Got the domestic air conditioning system, twin cola generators, I think they're 27 kVA. All the electricity panels, I think we've got shore power this side, we've got DC power here, and then the fuel system behind here. Now the standard setup is 4,000 litre tanks, but there is also an option for 8,000 litre tanks, and they're both linked. And we've got a proper sight gauge here so you can see where the fuel comes up to, they flip over and turn red. Really nice to have that as a backup. You've obviously got the electronic system too, but having that sight gauge really gives you an accurate view of exactly what's going on. Performance of this, uh, standard cruising speed is around about 14 knots, and it's at that sort of speed you get a range of 500 nautical miles on the, the 4,000 litre tanks, or around about 1,000 nautical miles if you go for the long range 8,000 litre tanks. Flat out it will do around about 20 knots. It's very much a kind of semi-planing boat. It's not designed for rushing around. It's designed for enjoying the ride and enjoying the boat when you get there. So really interesting boat. I'm a big fan of this 
kind of indoor outside vibe that sort of blurs the boundary between the two. Personally, I really enjoy it. I'd love to know what you make of the yacht. Do please post in your comments below. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to bringing you the next video. Thank you.